So a lot of people just haven't thought about it. And so we're trying to engage communities in a conversation and, uh, and certainly get the word out through the media as well. And you know, I heard you say um, family planning. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that's, that's an interesting term because um, at a different, different ages in your mm -hmm. life, that's gonna mean different things to a woman. As a, as a young woman, family planning sounds like, well, okay, I, I guess I'm supposed to be planning on having a family as opposed to planning for my right. own sexual health. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a really it's, good it's point. It's interesting. Because one of the things we know is that 18 to 30 year olds do not react to family planning. They mm -hmm. think it's something, just as you said, it doesn't have anything to do with them because they are not planning a family. Right. They're trying to prevent <laughs> pregnancy uh, a lot of times at a certain time in their lives. So, and that's what Mary Loesch and the folks at the University of Northern Iowa are working on. I still use family planning because my audience is a little different. I'm out there talking to people who do understand that. Uh, but we do need to find the language, and that's one of the things they're looking for, and that a lot of people are looking for around the country, is what language resonates. And when they do their work with the social marketing, they are probably not going to be talking about family planning. A lot of people don't even understand what contraceptives are when we're talking about that. Birth control seems to be a word that most right. people understand. But I'm glad you brought that up because we talk a lot about language. Just as, you know, we're, we're talking about unintended pregnancy. There are a lot of people out there who maybe were unintended, but certainly they were wanted once they came along. Uh, so it, it is a matter of language and how we phrase this and how we, how we have a conversation about it. When you're talking about uh, family planning, is it, are you running the gamut from talking about abstinence all the way to IUDs? Well, people often ask about that because we know now that abstinence-only education isn't really working in this country. The federal government invested a lot of money in it. It isn't working. They did their own studies, and which showed that it's not working very well. But certainly, every curriculum I have curricula I've seen uh, out there that's being used in schools or after-school programs always talks about abstinence when we're talking about young, when we're talking about teenagers, because. We know that the only way to keep from getting a sexually transmitted disease or to keep from being pregnant is to be abstinent. Uh, but we have lots of kinds of different options for birth control that are very, very effective. And as I said, uh, for my generation to know that there are three new kinds of birth control, two IUDs and, uh, and Implanon, which is a hormonal implant, basically, that are available that are almost 100% effective for long periods of time that you can uh, actually have removed if you decide you're ready to have a child, this is revolutionary. So you run, you go from certainly abstinence is, is one way, um, but also we also have a wide range available. And on our website, if, if you go there, we have two things we're really proud of. One is a comprehensive map of all the places in Iowa that now offer birth control services and, and women's reproductive health, not just birth control, but all the, you know, you can get your yearly exam, you can, a whole wide range of, of services, including uh, STDs, um, all of those things. So if you go online, you can just click on the community where you live and it will pop up uh, the, the access information for, and then you can go directly to the website and in some cases actually make appointments right there online. So we've got that comprehensive map, which we're proud of, but we also have a list of all of the contraceptives. So if you want to know a little bit before you go in so that you can ask informed, sort of informed questions and begin a conversation with the counselors, the great thing as I've experienced, because I've traveled around the state and I've, uh, I've actually job shadowed uh, nurse practitioners as they've gone in to talk to uh, women 18 to 30 and in some cases young men, they do an amazing job of counseling. And I, as a teacher, as someone, it's wonderful to watch these really caring professionals really help young people understand what's available and find what's best for them. And if, if the method doesn't work, help them figure out what does work. Sure, a and hormonal solution may not right, work for someone. Right. Because our, all of our bodies are different mm -hmm. and uh, all of our circumstances are different and all of our personalities are different. And there are now so many different options that most everybody can find a contraceptive that, that works for them. And I think that's what's important is that we, to me, it's all about education. We need to educate the general public so that people uh, on Main Street realize this is a Main Street, mainstream issue and we can talk about it and that we need to talk about it. We need to figure out what all of what our responsibilities are. But we also need, with young people, we need, for me it's about rights, respect, responsibility. 
you treat people as adults, you offer them the tools to make wise decisions, and then uh, you hope that they take the responsibility uh, to educate themselves and, and use the products that we're uh, offering to them and effectively. Make, and make it accessible. Right. Right. But accessibility is really, really important for people. And the great thing now, what the Iowa Initiative is doing right now in Iowa, because uh, we have the resources coming into the state, we're opening clinics. And right now in Iowa, you can walk into a family planning clinic, most any place in Iowa, and get uh, a free long-acting reversible contraceptives. And that is huge because the three, these three long-acting reversible contraceptives, right now, if you're paying for them, cost about $500. Mm -hmm. And for most people, that's cost prohibitive. Yeah. So uh, we want to make sure that at no cost or low cost, uh, young people can come into uh, birth control clinics, family planning clinics, uh, and get the wide range of services that are available to them and the counseling that they they really need in most cases. Well, and right here in Iowa City with the Emma Golden Clinic, um, mm -hmm. who, who requested that we do this program right. today, they've uh, started a new thing called the Smart and Sexy mm -hmm. Contraception Party. Right. It's a birth control yeah. party where um, they, you know you can decide to host a gathering in your home, friends, family, coworkers, whoever you like to invite, and sit down and learn about different contraception mm -hmm. and kind of a comfortable environment and that's I think that's a really interesting innovative way to to bring people to the table. I love that idea. I like the idea because I think women uh, thrive on telling their stories and I don't think we do that enough. We're all very busy. We're all out leading busy lives. We need to take some time out to uh, across generations tell our stories and I always ask uh, adult women I'm talking to, we need to talk just, not just about the way our bodies work or body parts or even the methods of birth control, but we need to tell our own stories and help put sexuality into a context, into a human context. One more question for mm -hmm. you. Five years from now when this project mm -hmm. is over, what, what impact do you want to see? Well, I would like to be able to go to the National Governors Association. I've been there for many, many years and uh, in the eight years that I attended every year and that I was a leader uh, among the spouses organization and in my interaction with the governors, I don't believe I ever heard this, this topic discussed. And I would like to stand before the governors and I would be very proud to be able to say, if you want to see how to reduce the number of unintended pregnancies, uh, which certainly has a, a human cost, if you want to see how we can save money by preventing unintended pregnancies and investing in health care for women, then come see what we've done in Iowa. And, and I would also like to stand, uh, talk to our Congress, uh, congressional delegation in Iowa and across the country and say, look, this is a way to save money, but it's also uh, a, a way to empower women. And that's been something I've been interested in doing my entire life. And I'm really proud to be associated with the Iowa Initiative because what we're doing is that we're bringing together women from all over the state. And we're saying, uh, let's walk together and let's let's communicate and carry this message together that women's reproductive health is worth talking about publicly and it's worth funding at the state and national level. Well, wonderful. Thank you so sure. much for, <laughs> for sharing uh, all the information about the sure. Iowa Initiative. For more information about Christy Vilsack's work with the Iowa Initiative, please go to www.iowainitiative.org. This program was produced at the request of the Emma Goldman Clinic. For more information about the Emma Goldman Clinic, please go to www.emmagoldman.com. And if you're interested in viewing more Community Voice Shorts, go to citychannel4.com and check out our program guide. Thanks so much for watching. No one was around The sun was just coming up Over my home On Hickory Hill In that little farm town Black and gold and we roll on my head.